Okay, so uh, we are recording. And also a reminder, I know Donna had asked earlier if you could um, introduce yourself in the chat box if you haven't already with your full name, if your full name isn't already listed on your screen, on your camera, um, and your pronouns, anything about where you are um, calling in from today, um, what town you are in or what organization you're from, or if you are a parent, if you wanna share anything about the family that you represent here today. Um, and there were may have been a couple of questions in the chat that um, I missed here for Sam and Ginger. And so we can save those for the, the next part of the uh, meeting as well. And Sam, if you could put in the email address that Ginger was mentioning, that would be great just to drop that right in there. Uh, and Amanda also recently put in the new knowledge worth having document that I had started that you all have access to and you can all edit that so you can add things to it. So Ashley, I do have the uh, main mom link already in there, but if there's anything, and I'm not sure if it's plan of safe care specific or not, but if you want to add anything to that document before you have to hop off for your for your next meeting, that would be great. So if you can see that um, in the chat box, the new knowledge worth having document. Where to to be coming is a um, substance exposed infant webpage as part of the main CDC page in the maternal child health. It's just not ready yet. So in the next couple of months, we'll definitely be able to update that. Okay, excellent, thank you. All right, so moving on to the next portion of the meeting, I would say if you wanna take a moment to, to stretch, to stand up, to move, obviously you can do that anytime throughout the meeting, but I realize two hours can be a long stretch. So do whatever you need to do to, to stretch, move your body, drink some water, um, please do. And uh, does anyone have um, any questions about the meeting or about what I was just talking about in terms of intros? You can go ahead and ask now before while we're all stretching and before we move into the next portion of the meeting. Um, and Donna, you also, if you want to chat with anyone, you can send an individual chat if you want clarification on people's names if they're not able to, to make that change. Um, okay, then let me go ahead and share my screen again so we can look at that agenda and see what things we might want to consider sharing. Actually, I think I will copy and paste this right into the chat too, so that you know what things you might want to share. And then I will um, stop sharing my screen so we can all see each other. Um, Amanda, and if you wanna take it from here, Amanda's gonna facilitate this part of the meeting. Sure. Hello, everyone. This is so exciting that there's 30 people here. It's like the most people I've been in a room, room with in a long time. <laughs> um, so this part is the connecting the dots, any new, new knowledge worth having. So this is really if there's anything going on in your organization, um, that you wanted to tell us about, if there's any new research, legislator, legislative things that you know about, um, or any challenges that you're having that you feel like this network of people might be able to help with. So um, yeah, just if anybody wants to share, you can go ahead. Is that Robin? <laughs> yeah. You see um, also, you might be able to see like Paula has her hand, her electronic I hand. I the little hand oh, icon, yes. so I have for that too. I use the real thing instead. Um, so Cara asked me to talk a little bit about an upcoming bill. I think it's LD85, I might be wrong. Um, be, be really brief. So this is the bill about having main care insurance cover the cost of donor human milk. And uh, last year, a bunch of us, including reps from the Mother's Milk Bank Northeast based in Massachusetts, uh, all went to the state house. Remember going to the state house, <laughs> and it was very positively received, unanimously approved. And then the state house shut down, and then they had an election. So now we have to do it again. This year, there it's going to go to the appropriations committee, and it, there's a cost um, attached to this bill. So it's not just a policy; it's actually a bill uh, with money attached. Um, so there'll still be some of the same representatives testifying February 11th 
at 9 a.m. It's all by Zoom. So um, I'll look and see if I can find the link to the register. You need to register ahead of time with Carrie Witty, something. I'll try to find it and put it in the chat. Anyhow, uh, some of the main points that we've been discussing are, of course, the value of human donor, human milk for babies, fundamental. You know, with all the high technology and fabulous advances in science in the NICU, there's nothing like human milk and basic ed, uh, nutrition. Um, in, and also, we're going to talk about the cost of uh, formula compared to um, human milk. So I asked my local rep for some tips. What would legislators want to hear? It's not the great investment and then five years down the line, you're going to be saving money. They need to know right now, well, where's this money going to come from? So I think that Naomi and Amory or some other people from the Milk Bank are working on getting uh, figures about the cost of formula versus the cost of doing a human milk. Um, and so that the argument really has to be, um, you, it's not gonna be as expensive as formula. That's really what it comes down to. There's another twist that there's a company that uses human breast milk to make a breast milk fortifier. So that sounds really groovy, but it's a purely profit, well, I shouldn't say purely, but it's a profit organization. So they, they're literally invested in getting that included in the bill so that you know, that would be a captive market for them. So, so to counter that in some way, I would like to emphasize that the Mother's Milk Banks are established nonprofit organizations uh, with a great record of safety and uh, efficiency, and that the they're getting that you have a dedicated audience of women who donate, it's not for profit, their breast milk, they keep in um, compliance with safety and hygiene guidelines, and they um, promise to provide X amount of ounces in X amount of time. So you already have the delivery system set up and it's cost effective because it's not a profit organization. Okay, I'm not really a fan of women donating their time and their bodies, you know, but, but this is really food for people, not for profit. Um, I'm not sure how to say that without sounding too uh, reactionary, but that's my point that the, the milk banks are already established. Last year, I had a whole little spiel ready. And then one senator asked a question I'm like, well, so, you know, isn't formula okay? I'm like, bingo, prenatal class. And I got up there and I gave my two, you know, two or three minute spiel about the gut membrane and how it matures in three, six months and the macrophages eat up this. And so I'm gonna do that again because it, please, add some testimony, send it to your reps or whatever. But every single time you have a chance to talk to somebody, you're educating them and you're dispelling a myth. I used to do a lot of lobby or some lobbying for licensure of IBCLCs in Massachusetts. And I worked with my friend, Christina, who's also a, um, she was a NICU doc in Germany. And I swear every single legislative aide who she met was enlightened. So it's always worth it just to get the facts out there it would be great if the facts propelled the legislator to fund this. So that's our ultimate goal. So February 11th, 9 p.m., I'll look for the contact and put it in the chat box for who to um, register for testimony, or at least just write. And that's the update. Can I, can I follow so up much, on that? Robin? Please do. Oh, yeah, I just, wa I just wanted to add that Brooke put some things in the chat about it. Um, and then if you, you guys don't mind introducing yourself when you talk, so I don't know if you want to do that real quick, Robin, and then Cynthia can, and I'm sure Cynthia has a lot to say about this. <laughs> Robin, you're muted. Okay, I'm sorry, what, I was looking for that contact. What was the question? Oh, I just wanted you to introduce yourself. Oh. Dang, I thought I was introduced on the chat box. My name is Robin Snyder Drummond, and I live in Ellsworth. And um, I moved up to Maine in July of 2019, pre-COVID, pre PC. And, um, and I 
worked with a, um, I was on the board of directors for the Massachusetts Lactation Consultants Association, Partners in Perinatal Health. I did a lot of work there. So I'm glad to get involved with them as main coalition. Great, thank you. Yeah, and Robin's been helping with our website, which we very much appreciate. Um, yeah, Cynthia, did you wanna I just, about I, that I don't wanna say much. I wanna say, Robin, you did a great, I'm Cynthia, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Cynthia Cohen. I'm the Director of Client Relations for Mother's Milk Bank Northeast. We have been working with Kara and Robin and a number of other people to move the legislation forward in Maine. And I just wanna say like, like just in terms of connecting, I just wanna say it really quickly. Part of the reason why this moved forward too is we had an outpatient dispensary grand opening in Lewiston, Maine at um, pediatric practice there. And um, Representative Margaret Craven was there, and we started talking. And she was, she was, you know, she was already thinking about doing something like this. And I was able to connect her in with, you know, people in our milk bank and Anne Marie and Naomi Baryam, who <clears throat> were able to move it forward. And we were this close to having it go out of committee, and COVID hit. So I do want to compliment all the people who did come to testify last year. Um, did a beautiful job. I want to reinforce for Robin, please, please, please. I, I will not be there, but both Anne Marie and Naomi will be there um, next week. Um, please speak, please register, please make yourselves heard. Um, I know also um, Sharon Economides from Maine Medical Center is gathering data. I've sent her some information. Um, and I just to clarify one little thing, Robin, you spoke beautifully and you were really on the ball with everything. Um, just to be clear that it's not less expensive uh, donor milk is not going to be less expensive than formula for the cost of it. Formula is cheap, but the long term, even just you know, it, it, a donor milk is not as expensive as they think it is. Uh -huh. so that's really important. Um, there is a hospital that did a study, and I'm it hasn't been published yet, so I can't say who it is. Though some of you have heard her speak, um, which showed that really in their well baby unit, the babies who receive milk were only receiving 200 on average, only 200 milliliters of milk. That's yeah. 200 milliliters from our milk bank is only $27 per baby. This is not a huge expense. This is life-saving for babies in the NICU. Um, I just make your voices heard. We, you know, I just, you are the, you are the ones who are going to move it forward and we are here to support you and work with you. If you have any questions about the milk bank, how we process milk, the safety of our milk, anything, 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 um, I can put my contact information in the chat box. Please reach out to me. Um, if I'm not here next week and you call my number, certainly my colleague, Anne Marie, will, will help you and she's the one who's working on the legislation. So we are here to support you, the babies in your care. Um, and you guys are all you know, amazing at what you do. So thanks. Thank you so much. Ashley, did you have something before you leave? Ooh. Oh, there we go. I just put it into the chat. I just wanted to mention the upcoming info session on the plan of safe care uh, because I'm peddling my plan of safe care everywhere I go. Um, so it's in the chat. Uh, if anyone wants more information, please email me um, and we'd love to see you at a training. Thanks, Amanda. I'm going to pop off. Thanks, Ashley. I'm seeing Ashley at all of my, and Kelly. There's so many people that are in all my locations now that I work at Maine Health. Um, so who, anyone else have in, in, want to talk about, oh, Kelly, did you want to say something? You have to leave now? No, you just, you're just saying you have to leave. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I had a, I had a couple of things I just wanted to add, um, about the hearing, but I know there are other people, their hands raised. I don't know if it's on this topic or something else. So you can go. Uh -huh. I think we're just staying on this topic right now. Um, yeah, so I added some information. Uh, my name's Brooke. I'm on the board and I also work in the state house. Um, I work for the speaker of the house. Um, and so I'm happy to help answer any process questions, um, provide resources, provide links. Obviously we're all navigating remote testimony for the first time. Um, the state house's first remote um, public hearings, um, big ones were last week and they've actually been going well. And um, it's been really wonderful to um, be able to reach more, hear from more folks who don't have to take the time off work to travel all the way to Augusta. Um, I also wanted to mention for folks who don't have reliable internet to testify via Zoom, there's also an option to testify just by calling in. 
Um, so happy to share that info as well. Just, you just would need a phone line. Um, I would, you know, it's great to submit written testimony, um, but I, I would suggest the number one priority would be being there to do it in person. Um, it really, that you'll have the ears of all the legislators um, who may or may not read every piece of written testimony. So if you have the time to be there at the time, that's really wonderful. Um, and then just one other thing to build upon what Robin said. Um, so this will be going to the Health and Human Services Committee again. Um, and there, and while what Robin said about um, there being a really tough budget situation is absolutely true. The role of the health and human services community is to consider the policy and they we really try to encourage them not to get too bogged down at that point in the cost and if they think it's a good policy they should pass it out. And then later the appropriations committee will try to figure out if they can fund it or not. Um, so, you know, it's certainly good to talk about the value, but I would focus on the non um, focus on why donor milk is so important and um, hopefully the legislators will hear that loud and clear as they clearly did last time um, with it sailing through the committee. So here to be a resource and thanks all. Thank you, Brooke. I'm so glad we have you on our team. <laughs> um, Paula, do you want to go next? Yeah, it's not on that topic. Is that okay? <laughs> did, does anyone have anything else on the donor milk topic? I didn't want to say when I go through my my Google Doc in a bit, one of the links there for anyone who is intimidated by writing public testimony or giving public testimony, there is a link from the main women's lobby that I'll share that's in that document that gives some really good guidance and in, in ways to form your testimony. So know that you have resources out there if you're feeling a little nervous about it. And, and I also one of one of the links I shared was the testimony from last year. Um, so you can get a sense of what it is. You know, some people just write a couple sentences and that's wonderful. Um, especially if you have any personal experience that is really valuable for the legislators to hear. I clicked on the link, Brooke, and it looked like it just went to a legislative page. So I don't know if anyone else saw that or not, if that's what happened when you clicked um, on it. It may be a little tough. To, it should go to a legislative page okay. with a little plus sign that says public hearing okay. testimony that you have to expand. So Perfect. the web, the legislative website is so clunky and hard to navigate. So. Uh, and Hannah, I see your um, question about sharing that with the Maine Birth Justice Collective. Absolutely. Oh, sharing these Zooms. You're talking about the Zoom meeting or do you mean the Zoom um, testimony? The testimony and also what Ashley had posted, um, <gasps> but I mean, she's gone, but I assume yeah. yeah, I think that's good. I think Ashley wants everyone to know about, the, we want everyone to know about the plan safety. Yeah. So please. And anything that's shared in these meetings are public knowledge and, and for public. So if, yeah, please share. Okay, anybody else on donor milk? Great. Paula, would you like to go? Sure. I just wanted to share um, when COVID hit, um, mid coast. Paula, can you introduce oh. yourself also? Sorry. I can, I can. Um, so I'm Paula Norcott, IBCLC, new, newly passed IBCLC. Um, I've been a CLC for just over 20 years, so it's a big deal. Um, and I work at Maine General in Augusta. I also work at mid coast in Brunswick, and I also am in private practice. Um, mid coast our pumping situation for our employees was that they were coming up to a pumping room in labor and delivery and it was shut down when COVID happened and so all of our employees were sort of left to try to figure out how to pump um, in different places and we just ordered and I think they're arriving this week the mom of a pods so we got two and we're putting them in different places within the hospital for our staff um, to have pumping um, places. Yes, it's super exciting. Um, and I, I don't really know too much about them, to be honest. We're actually doing a little webinar about them, but I know that our employees can sign up in an app to use the space and it's dedicated for just pumping or feeding. Although I say feeding, but babies aren't really even allowed in the hospital if they're not 
having to be there. So it would really be for um, pumping or for potentially a patient walking through with a baby who needs to feed their baby and wants a private space to do that. Um, so we're super, we're super excited about it. I'm sure there'll be a press release, um, but I think it's really exciting for our employees. It was quite a little scramble after COVID happened for them. That's all. That's awesome. That'll be exciting to hear how those pods go. Um, did you want to go next, Shelby, and introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Shelby Vasseri. Um, I actually just moved to Maine in August, so I am very new. I came from Georgia, so it's like living in a whole new world. Um, the snow the past this past week threw me for a loop, um, but I am a postpartum doula, and I am waiting on my lactation counselor uh, results for my test, so fingers crossed on that one. Um, basically, I'm a little bit nervous to like throw myself out there, but I, um, you know, I'm new to the state and I'm very interested in getting involved in anything that you guys have going on. I live in, I live in Kittery, so I'm in York County. So that would be pr like the preferred area. Um, but any volunteer opportunities, work opportunities, anything that you have going on, super excited to be a part of it. And um, I'll drop my email in the chat if anyone has anything. And other than that, I just wanted to say hello and thanks for being such a cool state. Welcome. That's so exciting. I'm so glad you found us so soon. Um, side note, have you been to Lovebirds at, in Kittery? Because it's an amazing donut place. Every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, great. So anybody else have things that they want to share? All right. What care? Oh, Hannah. Hi, I'm Hannah Lord, owner of Peony Doula Company, and I'm a full spectrum doula and certified lactation counselor. Oh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, but we sort of recently, since COVID, I think maybe last summer, started the Maine Birth Justice Collective. So if anybody would like to participate, we're still trying. We've basically mostly had like the core members coming up like with Zoom meetings and whatnot, but um, we're going to eventually have like Skillshare. So if people want to have a Skillshare, like you're welcome to do that, um, anybody, or have a request for one that maybe you want to learn or something but we've been doing stuff through Zoom and hopefully we're gonna figure out more missions of what we want to contribute to Maine. But yeah, I just wanted to share that. I would be happy to connect you guys. Oh, I see Shelby, <laughs> but yeah. Hannah, can you share more about what a full spectrum doula is? Yeah, so um, I provide care from for any pregnancy outcome. Um, so that includes um, loss and abortion, um, as well as birth and postpartum. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Can you also share a little bit about the Maine Birth Justice Collective, like what their mission is? Um, we're still sort of like coming up with like what we want, but we do have we do have like core values and whatnot, and I could like have them sent out to you. I don't really have them on my brain right now, but right now, I mean, it's really just like having us collaborate and having a space where we can all connect and like all feel like um, we can have the education that we need um, to become a birth worker, that everybody feels represented. Um, and also that everybody, has the opportunity to have a, a birth worker care for them, whether you know it's abortion, whether it's loss, whether it's bereavement, whether it's birth, whether it's lactation, um, whatever journey you're in. Um, something that we're sort of trying to get is we're also trying to get like doulas to be um, covered by main care but we're like at the very, very, very beginning stages of that conversation. <laughs> but 
Um, so it's cool to like see how you guys are doing, you know, your own sort of work trying to get breast milk covered by main care, because that is definitely something like I'm personally, like I know nothing about legislation, like other people in the group are more, you know, have more knowledge on that. So um, I feel like they'd be better to talk about the group as well than me, but here I am. Um, but um, we definitely would, I've, I've, mess, I've mentioned um, this organization to them. And um, I mean, everybody's very busy, <laughs> but I definitely like if there's ever opportunities that you guys want to collaborate with us or like you feel like, like we can do something to support you. Like when I, like for instance, I'm planning on like, telling the core members at least about, you know, the ask to write a testimony or, you know, like a lot of people in the group would be happy to support in whatever, whatever way we can. Um, and yeah, and just like, if there's a need in Maine, like we definitely want to like highlight that need. Um, we do go by um, the, we, we sort of modeled under the reproductive justice standpoint. Um, it was um, created by Sister Song. Um, a organization of black, um, Shelby might be know about this, um, black um, women and, um, and queer women in um, Georgia. And that is the right to have a child, the right to not have a child, and the right to be able to care for the child in a safe environment so that, you know, it, it, it's a huge spectrum of what that means to us. So yeah, that makes any sense. <laughs> great, thank you. No, that was great. Yeah, I just wanted to, well, I'm on the email list for that and I haven't been to a meeting yet. So that's, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, any other things that people want to talk about or questions for Hannah? Hi, uh, is it okay if I introduce myself? Yeah. So, hey, I'm Dr. Allie Kopelman. I'm a pediatrician who is currently located in Portland. I've been in practice since 2007, and I've been a lactation counselor since 2016. Um, I work for SMHC and love the opportunities to do counseling with my patients, both in the hospital and when they first came to the office but never really had the time to really sit down and do the down and dirty. Um, since starting my own practice, or a big reason for starting my own practice was to be able to have the time to actually sit down with patients and to counsel and to see where they're at and to help them move forward in their goals. So I wanted to just put out there that I am here as a resource. Um, I am doing general pediatrics, but I have a lactation package and I do also take people on scholarship. Great, thank you very much for sharing. And congratulations on no. starting your practice. Okay, it was, oh, Rihanna? Yes, hi, um, my name's Rihanna Plord. I work at WIC in Bangor. We cover Penobscot and Pescataquis counties. Um, I'm a CLC and dietitian as, long, as well as the breastfeeding um, coordinator at, in Bangor. And um, I just wanted to share just a couple updates of um, kind of what we're doing for breastfeeding education here. Um, I know I've talked on here before about our buddy program, but for people who um, haven't um, heard me talk about it. It's basically a program where we pair up moms at the same gestation um, or currently breastfeeding and then they act as a support with one another. Um, we haven't had a huge success rate with that yet, but it's new and we're still trying to promote it. Um, so I just wanted to give updates on that. Um, also, something that's really new and exciting is our breastfeeding peer counselor here. Um, her name's Mitchell. She um, came up with this um, newborn nutrition class. So we, we titled it like that, but it's breastfeeding focused. Um, so we're really excited about that because um, we're able to, we're gonna be providing it on Zoom because of COVID restrictions. Um, so we're promoting that right now. 
Um, that's basically going to have content related to like what breastfeeding looks like in different families, um, whether they're pumping or, you know, uh, nursing at the breast or, um, you know, all the different ways or if they're breastfeeding twins kind of thing. Um, and then involvement of other family members as well. So it's going to have a ton of information. We're really excited and we're hoping for a successful turnout with it. Um, we're going to try to offer it two times a month for our WIC participants. Um, and then we're also working on like short five minute videos for breastfeeding education too. I think I'm kind of bringing this up because, you know, COVID's like uh, brought upon a huge challenge when it comes to like breastfeeding education and we're really trying to utilize um, technology so with zoom you know short educational videos even like tiktok videos um, we're trying to get out as much education as possible um, it's we found a little bit of difficulty in getting that participation even though we're promoting it like we have social media and we're promoting it on there we're, you know, sending out text messages to our participants, but I didn't know if anyone had any other suggestions on how we could promote that. I know it's WIC specific, which is hard. It's not something that you could promote to like everyone, um, but has anyone else had like issues with like promoting things and with COVID and everything like that? I have, I have something to say. Um, I, I run several support groups and I just want you to know that attendance is way, way down since COVID. Um, and what I've been hearing across the board is it's kind of been the same for everybody. Like it's hot or cold. Um, I think people are overwhelmed in their day-to-day -day life. I, you should not take it personally and keep on mm -hmm. trudging forward because it can be it can be frustrating, but I really think that it's just like baseline chaos for people. Yeah, um, and I love that you're doing TikTok videos. Yes, it's definitely a new kind of thing, but I mean, you can do so much with like editing and like, I mean, you can get so much information and, you know, I mean, there's so many young moms and that's the thing right now. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, we're just trying to target, you know, our populations as best as possible, but. That's our update here um, at our Bangor WIC office, um, but yeah. Thank you very much. And if anyone has any advice around that, let us all know. <laughs> um, Robin, would you like to go next? I just wanted to reiterate, I, I'll put it on the chat again. There's an interesting film put out by Human Rights Watch called Through the Night. And you can see it online. I left the link on the chat box. Um, oops, I have to send it to you. And um, it, you can see it February 2nd through February 8th. It's called Through the Night's Human Rights Watch. And it's about childcare and how low-income working families are really piecing things together. In the trailer, it shows this one woman who is a childcare provider. And she's been a childcare provider for 23 years. And now she does overnight because there are people who don't have any childcare during the night. They have a night shift or something. And um, I'm sure you're all familiar with what that's like. So I just want to put a plug in for that. And this relates to the Maine Women's Lobby and also the Breastfeeding Coalition work on getting paid family leave. So put the two together. It's a good thing to watch. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing I wanted to say is... Um, I just finished the course with Michelle Emanuel, occupational therapist, and I am offering tummy time consults. So this is really for babies like up to six months. Babies, tummy time, does it, people know what tummy time is? The whole thing, yeah. So I offer 45 minute sessions, two or three at a, uh, one, two, three weeks. Um, and it's by Zoom and it's one-on-one, -on -one. and um, I am a lactation consultant. These are tummy time, but sometimes it evolves into breastfeeding questions, but that would be um, a separate consult there. But anyhow, um, so I'm offering them for free for the next couple months because I just think people should know about it. So you can go to my website. I'll put it down on the chat list. Miguel, tummy time. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Robin. 
All right, anybody else have anything to share? So Kara has that document that she wanted to go over. If you want to share that now, Kara. Yes, um, here we go. I'm just going to adjust where you all are on my screen so I can see both you and um, the screen here. I can do that. Um, so hopefully you all have been able to click on this so that you can have this uh, for resources for yourself later on as well. Um, the first one I want to share I've shared before is the USBC Weekly Wire newsletter. Um, and I'll see if I can click on that and if it'll pop up so we can just look at what is included. We're not going to look through the whole thing, but there are so many updates that are coming from the United States Breastfeeding Committee and you can sign up for, um, you know, there's information about COVID, um, MPINC, if you work at a hospital, at a birthing hospital, ask if the manager has filled out their MPINC survey. That is, it stands for Maternity Practices and in Infant Nutrition and encourage them to fill it out. Maine was scoring pretty low on the return rate. So be sure to share that if you can. Um, so a lot of really good information in here. I'm just trying to scroll through so you can get an idea of how much is in there. It, it comes out every week. Um, you can subscribe to get that newsletter yourself if you want some updates. I try to include some in our updates every time we have a meeting, but every week there's something new. So check that out. Um, and okay, the I also wanted to share the USBC had put it out there to people who are on on their uh, the listserv, I guess, that they were creating a document called your COVID. Uh, I just gotta move this over. Your COVID nineteen workplace rights, breastfeeding and lactation, and they said that this was available for. Um, state coalitions to um, co-brand. So we have our own co-branded document here about um, COVID-19 specific workplace rights. They did also create something that um, is a main specific workplace breastfeeding rights document too that I have to locate and share that as well. But this is a, a nice document that we will try to get out there um, I mean, you have access to the link now so that you can pull it up on your own, own and print it and hand it out if you feel like you know people who might benefit from this. Um, it talks about working remotely, what people's rights are there. Um, and if there, um, it talks a bit about precautions and what do I do if I need to take time off work. So they were able to pull, the Work Life Law Center was able to pull main law information into this. So know that this is available for you to access and hand out and feel free as I'm going through all these things to um, come off mute and ask if you if there are any questions. Okay. Um, oh, this might this is the other one. Sorry, <laughs> that I was just talking about. That I'd have to find it and share with you. It is um, talking to your boss about your pump. I think specifically about my your pumping rights. This is the main specific one. This is a few years old, but I don't think anything has changed. I know the main law hasn't changed, but this has information about how to plan for returning to work and pumping. Um, this is something that we might come up with, the coalition might end up coming up with something very similar to this that I guess it's only a couple of years old, um, but know that this is an option as well. This is probably very similar to the COVID one but if you want to have a separate one that is available. Um, and then other COVID-19 specific resources, um, the US LCA, United States Lactation Consultant Association has this handout that is not too hard to look at. <laughs> Sometimes these handouts can be like just so much information, um, but this one is one that you, you can consider um, sharing with people that you work with. Um, it's just short and sweet. It may be helpful, it may, may not be anything new. Um, the AAP also has something. Um, Paula, if your question is related to this, please unmute and go ahead and ask. Hey, did you, can you just clarify, were you saying that the state 
um, Breastfeeding Coalition might be working on like a breastfeeding and working like sort of rights kind of document? Yes. So that workplace support and helping um, companies become a breastfeeding friendly workplace is definitely on our strategic plan. What our specific activities are going to be, our action steps are still to be determined, but we are, we are really trying to narrow down the objectives and the strategies within that plan related to workplace support. And it might either be sharing these documents or if we find the need to create our own, then we might do that too. That's super exciting. We get a lot of emails and families reaching out, teachers particularly, but we actually had an in-house PT who was really getting a hard time about pumping at work. And the law is so vague and there is so much gray area about what employers have to or don't have to do, what the rights are. I think that would be brilliant. Yes. So absolutely. helpful. And that law, like I said, hasn't changed in a while and it does offer pr protection for, I think up to, um, might even be up to three years in terms of being able to pump in the workplace. Um, but yeah, take a look at the law. And if you have suggestions for how that could be um, improved, that might fall under what we would include in our um, strategic plan as well, whether it's under workplace support or advocacy component of our strategic plan or both. That's awesome. Um, and Amy, I don't know if you're still on, Amy Van Heeren from Maine, um, from Pump Spotting. I'm not sure she's still here, but she also has some excellent workplace support information on her site too. So if anyone has access to that, Nicole or anyone, I don't know why, if anyone has any access to the pump spotting info, you could drop that into the um, chat box. That'd be cool. Awesome. Um, main mom right here. This is something I had mentioned before, the main maternal mm -hmm. opioid model. Part of that is that plan of safe care that Ashley Olin was talking about. So that's definitely something to look at. She, Ashley is going to be speaking more about that in the next couple of months, but they just updated their website. So I would definitely recommend Got it. Um, no, this should be fine. I have a patient coming in at four. Here's someone is um, not on mute. <laughs> and it threw me off for a second. Okay. Um, Kara, okay. you can mute people. If oh, I just have to get to that right page. I know, I wish I could Art. help you. <laughs> um, here we go. Okay. If I muted you and you want to speak, then um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. So I know some people are calling in on their phones as well. Okay, thank you, Amanda Nicole, for adding in some resources there. Um, WIC, speaking of WIC, there is this article about Biden and his plans for WIC investment, how it could improve maternal and child health and re by reducing racial disparities. So that's something, I'm not sure if that link will work like that now that I, I must have put it in there twice. Um, so that might be something you're interested in taking a look at. Um, Vicki Roy, I don't think you made it on the meeting today, but we were emailing recently and she um, was going to share from Central Maine Medical Center that they've restarted their breastfeeding weekly support group in person actually. And that with a limited number, people sign up before coming and they have strict COVID guidelines. Um, so I was asking her more about that. It sounds like it's only a few people. And Paula, thank you for sharing that about it being kind of across the board breastfeeding attendance. So I facilitate, um, uh, so I'm Kara Kaikini, I didn't introduce myself at all at any point, board president of the Maine State Breastfeeding Coalition. I'm also a patient educator at Maine Medical Center, facilitating the weekly breastfeeding group there and teach the prenatal some prenatal breastfeeding classes. I also work with Kelly Bowden under the perinatal outreach program as the breastfeeding consultant. Um, I'll speak more about that in a second. But with that group, we our attendance has been like, two or three people each week, um, which is low for what we usually, our average when we were in person and even early on in the pandemic was around eight or nine, 10 people. So it's been, it's been sad to see it, but I totally understand. And it's tough for those of you who are trying to get groups off the ground to continue a momentum. If only a couple of people come, they might feel like, oh, I don't really know if I wanna go again. That wasn't really a group. Even though they can get some great one-on-one -on -one support <laughs> or one-on-two -on -two support when it's a small group. So pros and cons either way. Uh, and um, 
Vicki also shared that they're waiting for their date for their virtual baby friendly redesignation assessment and had just shared about um, some hospitals and there are four hospitals around the state that have these hand expression mannequins that can be shared. That's part of the, that was through the Six for Me program and the perinatal outreach grant, one of those where um, they were able to purchase hand expression. So mannequins that you put lotion in to their breast mannequins. It's not a full body mannequin, it's a mannequin I don't even know why it's called a mannequin, but it's a fake boob <laughs> that you put <laughs> a lotion in and you can practice hand expressing with, and it is available for people to use um, at skills fairs. If you wanna know where the nearest one is, you know Central Maine Medical Center has one, let me know, I can send you a list if you have any desire to have some sort of a, a skill session. I know Hannah was talking about skill sessions for doulas. Um, we're happy, I'm happy to support you with a skill session related to breastfeeding under the perinatal outreach um, program hat that I wear. We have a mannequin at Maine General and we're actually bringing it to, um, I'm where it's going to mid coast in two weeks, oh. transported by yours truly, yes. um, but Maine Gen, has never put the lotion in it and their our managers being like is really unsure about doing it have you utilized them at all Kara how easy are they to clean yeah I don't know the cleaning specific guidelines plus someone did ask a question they were saying that they were running out of the lotion do you need a specific lotion for it I don't know enough about it I, I'll have to look for the the manual that goes along with it uh, but I've seen, I mean, I was at a skills fair at Maine Medical Center with, with um, physicians and they had it on the stage and it was kind of a, an amusing um, experience for people who were a little uncomfortable with it. It's not, it's not a super comfortable experience to be doing, to, to um, teach someone how to hand express if you're not, if you're not just comfortable with the experience. <laughs> Make any sense? Uh, so I don't know enough about the cleaning aspect of it. I think that was your specific question. I think we should vote to call it a, a boobican instead of a mannequin. <laughs> um, so yeah, feel free to email me if you want, if you have questions, I will find the answers and get back to you with that. If you're interested in, in borrowing one from a hospital, I can connect you. Um, and if you have specific questions about them, they're not cheap. So it's good to be able to borrow if you can have someone to transport. So thanks, Paul. So that's interesting. So you're bringing it from Maine General to Mid Coast, but CMMC was going to be sharing it. Maybe they, maybe there's crossover in communication. All right, um, and we already learned about donor milk reimbursement. Thank you, Robin and Brooke and Cynthia and everyone for sharing more about that. Um, this is the Maine Women Maine Women's Lobby website I was mentioning that has lots of great info about. Um, citizen advocacy on any sort of bill that you're learning about. Um, has their how-to videos about how to navigate the state house legislature and reading a bill, et cetera, how to find your legislator's contact info, um, finding a calendar of different testimonies, how to submit it in writing, um, and then a great example of how to write a testimony, that's huge. Um, if you want to just do some general outreach with legislators in your area, making a phone call. So these are such great resources and I'm so thankful for the Maine Women's Lobby for their, um, what they have to, what they're offering. Okay, let's see here. Um, speaking of advocacy, paid leave, paid medical and family leave. This is another one that's been up almost every year lately. Um, Brooke might have some more updates here. I just wanted to share that this website, Maine Family Leave, is a good one. I think I have that. I might have that up already here. If you want to learn more about it, how to take action, what some paid leave stories are, if you have your own story about not having access to paid family leave or having access to paid or fa uh, family or medical leave, a good story, a not so good story, please consider submitting that through the main paid family leave site or uh, be prepared to start a, a, a testimony because there will be a hearing. It's specifically this year, I believe, and Brooke, you might be able to speak to this well, about setting up a um, commission to examine what it would be like to set up paid medical and family leave in the state. Um, so we don't have the actual language of the bill yet. A hearing has not been set yet, but it'll probably be mid to late March. In the meantime, check out the website, 
Think about what testimony you might consider submitting in writing or via Zoom. And think about how you can share this, this advocacy opportunity once it comes up with a specific date with your friends, families, colleagues, and if you can with patients or clients. Uh, and also there's this really cool coloring page. You may have seen us post it on the um, Facebook page. Um, the link is there. If you can color that in yourself or have a kid that you may know color that in, um, as many as they're trying to collect 100, I think, to, to make it part of a Valentine's Day um, uh, word is not coming to me. Campaign? Campaign maybe? Um, then that would be great. The more the merrier. It's a really great way to raise awareness. Um, so Savannah, I see you're saying, I don't have a personal story, but I have had a mom in my office who gave birth on a Tuesday, had to go back to work on Saturday. Yeah, if, if she's interested in ad, uh, in writing a testimony or just sharing her story, I think with Maine Women's Lobby or the, with the Maine Paid Leave Coalition, they might even be able to just record her or not. You know, they can just talk with her and take their own notes maybe as well. So think about how you can connect them. Um, and then the Paid Family Leave Coalition that's working on this is looking for someone to join their communication subgroup. If you're interested, if you have a background in communications or you just want to help with this effort, it might just be one meeting where you try to, you're helping them set up a, a communications calendar essentially for when to, to put things out. Uh, education updates. The uh, best conference is coming up. So you can go to the website to learn more or click on this for the brochure. You'll be hearing more about that if you haven't already, if you're not already on their email list. Um, through the perinatal outreach program, I am going to be doing a webinar on uh, marijuana and breastfeeding. And that's March 3rd. You can sign up with, uh, through that link there. I think we have like maybe 90 people signed up at this point. So no pressure here, uh, but that um, I'll do my best to give as much information as I can on that topic. Um, and then Sharon Economy, that's where Maymed had sent this information about uh, National Institutes of Health virtual meetings. Um, some of these have passed already, but if you're interested in, in more education, then you can check that out. And I think that is the last thing that I had. So keep that link handy if you want to refer back to it. Any questions about any of that? Again, I may have missed some things in the chat, so feel free to um, unmute yourself. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Kara, have you put the link for that document that has all that good information? Have you put it somewhere? I'm not seeing it. Uh, I think Amanda had dropped it in, but maybe you can drop it in again. Um, I can also do that now that I have it handy. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, and Paula, I noticed you sent me a message. I don't know if that was intended just for me or for everyone before I start reading it. If you meant it for everyone, then go ahead and share it again. Are you, ta are you talking about the one about the specific questions surrounding? I think so. Okay, yeah. so I was just, I would just put in the chat that there, the couple of things that have come up specifically around um, pumping at work is um, one, one uh, patient of ours was told that she would have to take earn time for her pump breaks. Um, so use her earn time and I couldn't find any specific information on that. They have to give you the time. It doesn't say whether or not they have to pay you for the time. Yeah, I think um, it's paid or unpaid. Right. Um, and then the other thing that's come up, and this is not the first time, and it seems to be teachers specifically, is their management changing their schedule and telling them like, you, your pump breaks are at nine and three. And, and these people are pumping at, you know, specific times. I just had one mom who got two days into the new pump schedule. She was mandated to take had mastitis. So um, that that's my other question is like, timing and bodies and health and um, if there's anything specific around that. I also wanted to say one thing that I said way back is that I would love and I will would organize, I can't believe I just said that out loud, um, quarterly peer review meetings around um, lactation cases 
Um, I think that would be incredible. I feel like our profession in the state is really missing this and it would be hugely helpful to me um, to do peer review and would love, um, I'll actually put my, I'll put my email in the chat box if anybody is interested in getting in on that or, you know, has any ideas about how to run that. I've never done anything like that before, um, but think it would be hugely valuable to a lot of us. Can you share more about what that is? And I don't know, did I end up sending you information about peer review that I was a part of in California? No, no. Why don't you share the information about it? <laughs> Well, <laughs> um, and I'll look for those. Um, yeah. My experience as part of the San Francisco doula group um, like 12 to 15 years ago was the peer review that happened quarterly, I believe. Um, people would submit experiences that they had with their own clients. Often that would be the case that it would be a, a doula in those situations who had a tough birth or a tough interaction with a provider or anything like that. They would follow the, the document, um, the peer review form and explain what happened, what questions they had, what they were looking for for feedback. So it's not always just like someone is calling you out on something and so you need to go through this peer review process. It's really an opportunity, which is when we have time in our meetings can be an opportunity here too, to say like, this happened for me, what suggestions do you all have? It really, I love the idea of doing a separate peer review process to, to get feedback from people and hear from other people who have experienced similar things too. So there is a there is a specific format that can be and probably should be followed. I'll see what I can find, but if, other, if anyone else has been part of that too, please share your resources. It's been a little while for, for me. I see Dr. Kopelman said she's interested in being participating. And I think Nicole Hart had said the same thing earlier too. So that's great. If you're interested in that, please put your name in the box or send Paula a separate message. I actually have a question if nobody else is in here. So with main health, I can I share my screen? Let me see. Yes, and I know Robin, I have two minutes. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Amanda, did you introduce yourself and your new job? Did I miss that? Uh, um, well, first of all, can you see my screen? With the yes. The mom model. Mm -hmm. Um, Amanda Powell, I'm the Vice President for the Maine State Breastfeeding Coalition, and then I am two months into my new job at Maine Health as the um, Program Coordinator for the Perinatal Substance Use Disorder Program. Yay! It's so exciting to be doing this work, but I don't know that much about <laughs> substance use disorders, to be honest with you, so I'm learning a ton, and one of the things that we're doing so this is the, the grant that I'm under, the main mom model. Um, so, and I will put the link of this in the chat. Um, but basically the idea, it's, it's a little bit confusing even for me, but basically the idea is that we're trying to get integrated care because a lot of people choose either their prenatal visits or their medication assisted treatment for substance use. Um, so we want those visits to happen together or at the same location. And that's kind of the model we're trying to create. But my question is that we're working with a grad student to um, develop a quality improvement process around hep C screening. And the problem is that um, when people are breastfeeding, they can't receive hep C treatment. And there's not really a great way to track when people stop breastfeeding to then be flagged to give them the hep C treatment. And I'm just, I'm just curious if anybody has any ideas around that or if people know a lot about hep C treatment with pregnant people or breastfeeding people, or if you know of any states that might be working on that because we're trying to maybe not recreate the wheel if this has been done somewhere else. Um, so yeah, if anyone else has more <laughs> experience around hep C in the perinatal realm, please let me know. And then I'll put this in the chat. 
right here so you guys can see it. Um, great. Well, yeah, that's my question. And I'll put my email in the chat too. There are a couple of questions for you in the chat or comments, Amanda. Yeah. Lynn, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? I think it's just, um, can you schedule patients for periodic callbacks? Um, I think so. I mean, I don't know a lot about the um, pediatrician side of things. I did talk to um, Jessica Rosenthal, who's on our board about it. But I think that would be a big part of it is having pediatricians help with the tracking aspect. Um, and I think that people can get treated during pregnancy, but I'm also not entirely clear on that. So yeah, we're just, we're just trying to figure out a good way to track all of these things because Maine has a really high Hep C rate. So thank you for these comments though, I'll read them. Okay, well, we are at time. Did you want to do the next part, Tara? Sure. Um, okay, so excellent. Bye, Paula. Um, let me just get back to our agenda. Share that. Um, yeah, so we are at our wrapping up portion of the meeting. Um, and before we go through and share what you're taking away from the meeting, just want to let you know you can find our upcoming meetings on our website. That link is um, here and I can put that in the chat. Um, and just to let you know, we have our annual meeting as our next meeting, April 1st, with updates. The first part will be, um, I'll be giving an, a presentation with some updates from us. And then the second part will be um, essentially like we currently have as our meeting. So the topic will be updates from us and then we'll have our usual um, check-in time like we just did now, connecting the dots. And we wanna hear from you about breastfeeding support advocacy and education in Maine, what you'd like to see, what, what is out there, what you'd like to see. Um, and we'll have some more specific questions around that too. In June, Ashley will be speaking about substance use and breastfeeding. August 5th falls on World Breastfeeding Week. We'll have some plans for that. Uh, October 7th, we'll have Brooke, be, she will be speaking uh, along with, a, I think she'll have a co-speaker that day as well about Advocacy 101, kind of going over the state of affairs regarding laws supporting breastfeeding in the workplace and the public, how to advocate, etc. And in December, Paula will be speaking about birth and breastfeeding, since we know the two are not separate experiences necessarily. Birth can certainly impact breastfeeding. So that brings us back to our group. I, we still have 21 of us here and I'm so thankful for everyone participating today. We can go around. I might actually call on people as I see you on my screen. So just be prepared to say one thing or more of what you're taking away from today's meeting. Um, I am always grateful to see so many people here and to have a max of 31 today was excellent. So that, um, I feel um, really optimistic and hopeful about the direction of the coalition and love seeing so many people connecting and all the great work that's being done around the state. And I'm so thankful for Sam sharing what she did and Ginger as well. Um, really eye-opening uh, information today. So thank you. Sam, would you mind going next? Hi, yes, I'm um, I was excited to hear about the legislative information and um, also I'm really excited about the peer review potential of a peer review group. So thank you for sharing that information with me. Thanks. Donna, you Donna Ellis, you are next on my screen if you wouldn't mind going next. Um, I am delighted to hear all the details about WIC. I am aware of WIC's presence, but um, certainly not knowledgeable about all the capability, resources, 
and ability to connect uh, individuals. Uh, so that was really huge. I learned an awful lot about WIC. And since we hadn't recorded earlier, uh, Sam has said that we can put the presentation on our website along with our minutes and the recording that we will have. So thank you for that. Uh, Robin, you are up next on. Uh, thank you. I was shocked to hear that um, a mom had not heard about WIC at all. It's been around since the 60s. So that blows me away and the outreach that you do. So thank you for that. Awesome. Nicole? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I also, I guess I took WIC for granted. <laughs> so thank you for presenting. I was really shocked to hear that Maine WIC could serve 50% more people than it is. That is feels really unacceptable to me. Um, so thanks for sharing everything you did, Sam. I, I learned a lot and jotted down some ideas and we'll definitely be talking about WIC more than I am. Awesome, thanks, Nicole. Hannah? Hi. Um I'm excited about like collaboration opportunities and to learn um, that, sorry, I'm like really spacey today. I was put under anesthesia like two days ago. <laughs> so I feel like I'm still recovering from that. But, um, but yeah, I'm really excited for collaboration opportunities and um, definitely to spread word along about like things happening within um, substance abuse because that's definitely something that um, core members of the main birth justice collective have like their honestly their birth work really surrounds that passion of supporting people through that so um yeah <laughs> awesome thanks for sharing that Hannah I'm really glad you're here uh Brooke um it was great to have such big participation and to see some new faces who I hadn't met yet so um, that was really wonderful and um, echo what a few of you said about um, about WIC and learning a lot and also just having my eyes open to how much community outreach needs to be done to make sure that these amazing services are reaching everybody who needs them. So thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks, Brooke. Savannah? Hi, yeah, so I am breastfeeding coordinator for Hancock and Washington County's WIC, and I'm just so happy to hear everyone, you know, really excited about WIC now and happy to that new knowledge out to all of you. Um, and I just love the new knowledge worth having document. I saved it right to my desktop and I love that all the links are right there. It's so, it's so great. So thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Savannah. Rihanna? Yeah, so I'm, I'm always um, really excited to come on these calls. I love networking and like hearing um, new things that are happening around the state. Um, even like the uh, idea of the peer review group, like with research and advocacy. Um, I really love all that kind of stuff. So um, I love learning things new every time I come on this call. So I'm excited for um, what that will bring. Excellent, thanks. Glad you're here. Jen? Hi, I too really enjoy or really um, appreciate the Google document with all of the resources that are available and a lot of the, the links that are active and that sort of thing. So that's really great. Um, it is really nice to hear all the nice comments about WIC. Um, it's a great program. It's been around forever. And so that is a positive thing. I did want to say that we did hire um, a new nutritionist or a nutrition counselor, and she will be uh, completing her CLC training um, this week, or she's starting it this week. So we are, um, almost all of our nutrition counselors are CLCs, um, which is always nice. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Lynn with an E. Are you there? Hi, this is Lynn. Um, I really enjoyed the meeting today for the little bit of it that I was present. And 
I didn't know what the peer review process was and I'm really excited about it. Um, I, it sounds like you're doing a lot of great things with um, family leave and pumping in the workplace, which I think is really important because, you know, like some people pointed out today, um, the lines can be so easily blurred in, um, I think it's, a scary proposition when you're trying to provide food for your child and your employer is driving the ship. Absolutely. Lynn, do you mind introducing yourself too and your last name? Sure, my name is Lynn Ferris and I'm a um, RN IBCLC and I'm working at Western Maine Health um, inpatient and outpatient visits. Um, we do feeding tracking. Um, on all the moms. And I'm also a mom myself of five kids who all have been breastfed. So the oldest is uh, 21 and the youngest is three almost. Okay, awesome. I don't know, I think Paula Norcott had to leave, but she's also a mom, mom of five kids. So you guys should connect if you haven't already. <laughs> um, that's incredible. Thanks for being here. Um, Jay Isles, could you introduce yourself if you're still here? Hey there. So I'm Jessica Isles, and I'm the WIC director for Penobscot and Piscataquis counties. It was also great to hear about all of the WIC feedback, and I just love Sam's energy. It's great. Um, and I thought uh, it's great to have an overview of all our um, qualified staff. I also picked up on the peer review group. I think that would be a wonderful piece. I know our nutritionists have talked about that. All the nutritionists here are certified lactation counselors and they had mentioned it would be great to kind of talk about certain case studies and see what other folks are talking about and maybe they can connect and help each other out with, with that. Um, so I, I wrote down that email. So that was great. The other piece I picked up on was maybe a universal spot to kind of see who the um, lactation experts across the state are to kind of find that information for folks. I know locally we have a local coalition and Rihanna uh, Rihanna works really well with that group to kind of develop a list. I think they have a brochure of all like the lactation experts and counselors in the area to refer folks to, but it would be really great to have something statewide. Um, I thought this was a great group and uh, I enjoy the presentation. Thanks so much. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, Lynn Taus. Hi, um, it is really lovely to see such a large group and so much interest in, um, in the politics as well as the uh, basics of around breastfeeding. And I had no idea that WIC was now offering bras and storage bags and the Haka pump. So um, I'm gonna make sure everybody and our staff is aware of that. I'm a, a nurse and lactation consultant at Penn Bay in Rockport. Um, so I'm just hoping that all the WIC agencies, the ones in Belfast, the one in Rockland, all have the same things. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. all of our agencies are given the same materials across the state. So any clinic that you go to will have all of the same materials. Great. Yeah, and Lynn, I saw that was a question that you had in the chat that may have gotten lost. If, if there's a list of those items that is shared or part of a brochure. Yeah. Because it, it would be nice. We, we, the brochure we have is, is probably a few years old. So I don't know if there's been, I, I should, do, if you have a website, I should probably look at your website and see what you have. Yeah, the website at this point would probably be um, the most up-to-date information or maybe the slides. Um, we have a vacancy for our outreach coordinator position. So that person is the one that updates those brochures. So right now I'm doing that and nutrition coordinating and overseeing the nutrition section. So um, I will put that on my list though. I think that that would be a really great, a really great idea to have a list of our breastfeeding supplies um, on that outreach brochure. So thank you for that. Great, thanks Lynn, glad you're here. Uh, Dr. Rosenthal, Jessica Rosenthal, are you there? You're on mute if you're trying to speak. Um, otherwise, we'll go to Amanda. I think you're the last one. 
Yeah, well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming and for participating. Um, I am excited to hear about all the quick things also. And I think I can use my main health hat because we're looking at reports on social determinants of health. And I just want to make sure that you guys are fully into Aunt, Aunt Bertha, which is the resource site. Um, I can put that in the chat too, but, mm -hmm. and yeah, just, just trying to see if there are ways I can put WIC into my main health job. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming and participating and we will see you next time. If not sooner, have a great week. And if you can testify next week for donor milk, please do. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.